Hello again, and this is your announcer, Ernest Pizarra, and you're about to watch another exciting episode of the Joy of Functional Game Dev, From Your Heart to the Screen, with your host, Ernest Pizarra. One of these times, I'm actually going to find an announcer, because that's much better and way less pathetic than announcing myself. Now, here's your host, Ernest Pizarra. So, a couple of things become perfectly clear as we go along here. Um... One is that the state that we're in right now with a console application and so that we can can remember it kinda kinda sucks. It's not that great. And ultimately this is this is not the game we want to make. What we want to really do is have some sort of uh, modern ish rendering because consoles are for uh, years and years ago. So today we're going to update this to uh, make use of mono game, and I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that. I'll close this for now. But uh, one of the things I really want to do is show some of these other, some of these other, uh, some of these other tools we're going to be using besides Visual Studio. And this one here is Trello, and um, the link for this particular board, which I believe is publicly visible. Somebody let me know if if it is not. And I will be sure to get that. I'll be sure to have this link as well. But also down in the show notes below, um, I can get, you can get... Well, there's this thing called um, Trello Gold. And there will be a link down below. If you click on that and then you sign up for Trello, I will get like two months of Trello Gold. Um, but <clears throat> one of the things I want to do here, and let's put this here and let's put this over here because what I really want to do is I have this I've captured so here's a feature list save it and I want an avatar smiley face I want a 60, 60 second game timer, uh, goal, get dollar signs, a wrinkle, manage mood with hearts, good mood equals move fast. Bad mood. Mood equals move slow. A heart cost money. Must rest. Rest looks like a Z. So now I've got this here. So here's a feature list. And and also as I uh, move to mono game and let's see uh, support um, game controller have audio um, and uh, that'll do for now so we'll we'll have this feature list and one of, one of the cool things about Trello is um, there there's these things called labels. So and the way that I like to do like I know how I want to do this. There's I mostly know how I want to do this. I'm unsure 
I'm uns uncertain how I want to do this. I don't think I want to do this. Uh, the purple, due to, due, to, uh, due to tradition for me, purple is always squee. And uh, when you need a new one, I need... That's not no color, I want this one, which is... Not gonna. I will not do this. That's my obsolete. And we don't really need blue. There is no one do. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, not quite yet having. Having any way to, well, I know. Oh, close that out and I modify my labels. Edit the labels. I know how I want to do that. And edit the labels. I know how I want to do that. And I know how I want to do a second timer set. That thing. These other things, not so certain. It's okay. We'll get to it later. I just want to get. Uh, get used to using Trello because this will uh, not only allow me to track different things as I go through these uh, these sessions so I don't lose my lose my place in between them really it also will go the, the, allow you to look at a glance and go okay that's where we're at and so that's really cool the other part is that at the beginning of each episode I've got this project and I've got releases um, and so end of the end of each episode there will be a new github release if you want to start out with where I'm at right there you can get the source code and go ahead and follow along if that is your thing or if you like it at one point and want to branch from there you can also just Branch the code at any time because here is the uh, this right here is this is the uh, where I the stuff I've changed and you can take it from there if you want uh, but so there's that and uh, we're starting for for these projects the version number is going to be zero throughout the project is going to zero Started with 0.0, .0 where there was really nothing. Goes to 0 0.1. It'll go dot two, dot three. It'll even go dot thirteen, dot fourteen. If I happen to have that many episodes, I don't imagine that I would with this simple of a game. But if I should, it'd just be that, and then the final one where here's the game, it's done, and that will be 1.0. And so that's that's how we want to do that. Uh, okay, and so that's the releases, and so at any point, uh, go here, the, uh, this link right here will be in the show notes below, as well as the link for what the code looks like at the end of the episode, so be on the look at, look out for that down below. Okay, uh, so I found, found some code. Kind of like, okay, we want to go mono game. So I found this site, which is F Sharp for Fun and Games, which is different than the F Sharp for Fun and Profit, except that this one stopped getting updated about a year ago. And and that's all cool, but so I said, okay, here's they're doing this. Um, we will turns out to be a lot lot simpler now. But so, uh, well, let's just go through that part. And one of the things, so here I am in my application. I want to manage NuGet packages for uh, my project. And one of the things I want to do is F Sharp Core. I want to make sure that 
I have the latest stable F sharp core in my project. And so make that magic happen. Then the other one is mono game. And I want mono game direct X, I think. At least I did on my Windows 7 machine that I that I tried it out on. <coughs> So let's put that, and we'll we'll see if we have to switch it or whatever. So bring that in. Did I not? Did I hit cancel? Go, and here is that, and here's a very lovely README text file that I'm not really going to read. That's the thing about README texts. I don't usually read them until some bad thing happens <clears throat> and then I will so alright and so that will be in there as soon as I check in later in the in the uh, at the at the end of the episode so now just sort of quickly we're going to take a look at here and this is where he did the uh, the bare bones if you're going to do something in mono game this is what you have to do but what quickly becomes obvious to me and anybody else who has been using your sharp while is for one thing this is this is his first or early early use of F sharp as a result because when I first did it there were there were dues all over the place there's no need for all these dues also, when he copied it into here, the the do sprite batch, nothing do, and so weird things with the code. But fortunately, what he did is he shows. Um, he has here's the GitHub repo, which is right here, and then more importantly, here is the platformer game. Which which has the whole which has the whole game here and not just the stuff that he was showing on his uh, on here, but a full on thing. But at least we can kind of see we see here's his graphics, here's his sprite batch, and he, he went with some. I think he was an imperative programmer or a C sharp programmer, and then kind of translated the and how do I do this thing in C sharp in F sharp, and that's why he went with unchecked default of stuff, and went if you if you try doing that in F sharp, it's it says it's like look dude this is not safe and we don't we don't like this, but so what I did it, earlier is I made a quick little boilerplate thing and said hey let's and, and here it is this is the boilerplate of uh, that mono game will allow us to get through and what it will and it's basically the code he had but stripped down of all of everything so let's take this and bring it over into. So we're going to add a new item. It's going to be called source file. We'll call it my game. .fs. There it is. We've got to move it up. Actually, probably that'll be fine. We're going to change our entry point. We can remove this now that it has gone to the Trello. And um, we will save this for posterity. Actually there's no need. We're abandoning the console completely. So yes we did we did something and did a little proof of concept before but now we're doing this and we say let game equal my game dot equal new 
my game dot my game and it doesn't know about him so we say it likes that and then we usually say game dot run and we up uh, on the one other thing we do is we say this is no longer console app this is a windows app don't show me the console anymore and go and we should see a little we should see a window that's blue if it works window that's blue window that's blue cool so now <clears throat> this is essentially all of the uh, mono game code that we're going the boilerplate mono game code yes there will be more <clears throat> but this is the uh, thing that enables us to get a game and the rest of it's going to be we're going to we're going to put functions into here and then they'll be called from the various places, but we're gonna we'll construct that. But first, uh, I've got a special segment, and so check it out, and then we'll be back, and we'll start to uh, wedge in some other things. The F sharp language feature of the day is tuple. You can't really say <clears throat> that tuple is a feature unique to F sharp. All the functional languages I've seen have this notion, and even in even in C sharp, they have tuples. They're a lot harder to work with, but in F sharp, uh, there's really a great ready construct <clears throat> for using tuples. But I thought we'd start our exploration of it by looking at the mathematical definition. And I won't use the voice today, but a tuple is a finite ordered list of elements. In mathematics, an n-tuple is a sequence or ordered list of n elements where n is a non-negative integer. There is only one zero-tuple and empty sequence. An n-tuple is defined inductively, because you know you love inductive defining of things, using the construction of an ordered pair. Tuples are usually written by listing the elements within parentheses, and that's true for F-sharp, and separated by commas. For example, blah denotes a five-tuple, and that would work actually in F-sharp as is. Sometimes other symbols are used to surround the elements such as blah blah blah. And we have lots of stuff. Here's, here's some etymology for it. Here's names of it. Uh, and things like double, triple. These are words that you use in... Wow, they decided to go to a thousand. It's a millupple. If you use a millupple in F-sharp, God help you. Well, but let's go t now take a look at the tuple definition in MSDN. A tuple is a gr grouping of unnamed but ordered values possibly of different types. That's mostly the same definition and now let's take a look at the definition that I like to use. A tuple is a single thing that is a group of things that is not a collection of things. Okay, you got that definition? Or do you need to hear it one more time? A tuple is a single thing that is a group of things that is not a collection of things. Okay, now I've got my sandbox app, and we're going to explore tuples, and we're going to take a look at uh, what in the world do I mean by a tuple being a single thing that is a group of things that is not a collection of things. So first, let's look at it as a it's a single thing. Let my tuple equal zero one. So that is a tuple. It is one thing. There's a let binding. If you take a look at the type, it's int star int. And if you want to, uh, for example, pass as a parameter, let uh, do something with a tuple. The tuple. Int star int. And that's how you would specify it. And 
we perhaps we do nothing with it. <coughs> and if you want more, you keep joining this stuff with an int and a string, uh, with, with anything, and even a times an times an int star int. So you can add a tuple to a tuple. And as, as you can probably notice, it can get ridiculous very, very quickly. And, and that's just really not uh, good. So it's, there, there are times when, most of the time in object-oriented programming, they say, okay, here's, I need you to return two things. They're not really related. There might be an int, which is an index and a name. So in, in an object-oriented programming language, do you want to go through the trouble of um, making a special class for that holds an int and a string when the int is really just an ID number and the string is just something to display? No, you don't. It's the overhead of let's make a whole new class and then so on and so forth. It's uh, there. Sometimes you just need to return extra values, and unfortunately, in in most uh, programming languages, you can only return one thing at a time. There are some where you can't, uh, Lu uh, or there's somewhere you can. Uh, Lua, you can do that. <coughs> But so, uh, so we've got the tuple, and so now the tuple is the one thing, but it's a group of things. Now the things are in a group, but it's not a collection of things. And the, what, what, is, what do I mean by that, and what's the significance of that? Because, for example, let uh, my list equal 0, 1. So I've got a list of two things. Now, my list, I can... I can do a list dot map on it where I could say where I could say for everything in the list and what have I done wrong here? Oh, because it needs to be a unit. List map which returns that and then we ignore. Or it's uh, we'll just do a let binding. Let my new list equal my list and map and what will happen is my new list will become a list where everything is increased by one there isn't a th there isn't a thing I can do to loop through the things that are in a tuple there are however a couple of uh, things that I can do let first part fist part first part equal my tuple tuple there's, there's fist now let second part equal my tuple send but most of the time the way that you want to get stuff out of a tuple is let so you have have a couple of things that look like a tuple but are really placeholders equal my tuple and you will find A is going to be an int, B is going to be an int, and it's going to take that stuff out of my tuple. Um, <clears throat> and that is, in a nutshell, the very simple basics of a tuple. A tuple is a single thing that is a group of things that is not a collection of things. All right, hey, that was great, and now we're going to move on to getting this doing something other than just showing a blue screen. And in order to do that, I want to also ex show you that in my extensions and updates, I have this thing, of sharp power tools. And may I, may I... Uh, that's kind of required for what we're about to do because there's really no other way besides F sharp power tools that will allow you to do make a new folder and folder name is going to be content because what we need to do here is uh Right after here, we've inherited the game. 
we have to do we, we want to be able to load um, bitmaps and other graphics so we need to have a place we need to let this thing know that we're, there's a place to do that so there we are there's content it's in the content folder and what we're going to do here is we are going to take a look at what do we need to do to um, render a render a bitmap. We're gonna we're gonna go back to the hey let's have let's have a person let's have the uh, <clears throat> My goodness, do I not have anything? I need that. I need the tools. Alright, let's put these things. This is paint.net. This is what I use to um, do much of my bitmap manipulation. I do sometimes draw an inkscape, but this is right here what we want to do. And what I want to do here is I want to get uh, the wingdings. And let's just get this thing on there. And we'll make you blue. Make it blue. It's a capital J. There we go. I got a smiley face. Capital J, how big are you? to grab everything that isn't the smiley face. We're going to invert the selection and then we're going to crop to it. So we're at 25 by 25. Zoom in a bit. 25 by 25 is okay. Let's canvas size it to 32 by 32. Center it. Um, get rid of that because that's unnecessary. And what I want to do here is I want to save it at face content, and we will call you avatar dot png. That's all good. Now we're going to add an existing. Content. And we're going to say that is a copy always. So that will always be there. Then apparently during the way that this stuff works is mono game load texture. I want to do that. So we need a texture 2D. Probably has to be mutable, doesn't it? Sigh. Well, let's get it done. So and then it's content .load to grab it and then to to draw it. We will at least get. Um, so let's let's draw on the screen. We got to do something, right? You let mutable texture texture two D equals null, and then. Content dot load. It doesn't put the extension, so content load so why does it call it this? What's our thing? Load texture two D. We're going to call it F2. 
Ta. And huh. So is there an open micro XNA dot framework dot content? Is that right? Load. Ugh. So what am I doing wrong? That's dot load. Hmm. What makes that work there? It does not. Let's see, what am I doing wrong? Dimension content, output directory, copy of newer. Did that. Actually load them. And the load content, which I am in. No, this is a load kind of <coughs> the content dot Hold on a sec. Okay, now I got it. Here we are. Alright, so this dot content dot load texture two D And as a result, the load does that, so this should, shouldn't have to do this anymore. <coughs> and one of the things I want to do here is sprite fetch draw, and we'll go with texture. New rectangle color dot white because we want to make sure that it shades correctly. So new rectangle zero zero thirty two thirty two and if we haven't completely hosed this up. And we don't need corn fly blue anymore, we do need black. If that is, if we did this right, and everything is as it should be, then uh, we're going to see a smiley face. And we see a smiley face, and that is amazingly awesome. <coughs> but of course this is we're, we're back where we started from, and now we have this idea of we have one texture here. That's the avatar texture. We have um, we're gonna have more more than that naturally. So for now, let's uh, let's bring let's bring up paint.net. Uh, there's that, and we're going to, we'll make that yellow. Here's this, and what did I go, did I go 24? Doesn't really matter. Need the dollar sign, and the dollar sign, going to Little that down. And do that. That's 14 by 28. 
Let's go back up to 32 by 32. This is centered. And zoom on in. Grab it, delete it, and save. Let's call you dollar. That PNG. That's cool. And now let's. Anything else at the moment? No, not really. Add existing item to it. Star dot star. Dollar. Dollar is a copy of newer. We'll put this one as a copy of newer. Okay, so very cool. And so well, this texture is avatar texture. And then obviously, gonna go with dollar text the dollar texture. And similar to how the avatar texture loads in the avatar picture, the dollar texture loads in the dollar picture. And we may as well put it right next to it. And this is all great. So we go. We have a dollar sign. We have a smiley face. We got money face. But th the fact of the matter is that uh, we now need to actually do something. And the doing of the something is going to be a bit more complex. And also, we're already seeing that, yeah, hey, uh, we're going to have one mutable texture per per thing, or we're going to have a different way of, um, of, of loading this in. How are we going to organize what we're doing? But so, uh, we start to work on that. But before we go ahead and get to that we're going to have another quick little special segment and then we'll be right back the F sharp operator of the day is the assignment operator so today's F sharp operator of the day is the assignment operator <clears throat> and the main point of this of this lesson is the following. Stop thinking of the equal sign as assignment. That's the imperative way. A less than sign followed by a minus sign looking like an arrow that goes left makes more sense. Okay. I've got myself a C-sharp sandbox and I got my other sandbox project in F-sharp and we're going to explore the assignment operator and if you're like me and you come from um, any imperative programming language um, the the equal sign to you means an assignment operator that's not necessarily true if you come from Pascal because years and years ago I did code in Pascal and the Pascal assignment operator was colon equals and and the uh, equal the testing for equality was just the equals but in pretty much anything after C and anything that derives at least loosely and can count C in its lineage, int x equals 10, the equal sign means take this value right here and put it into a box that we call x and we can put things in the box and take things out of the box and so on and so forth. Variables, you don't need me to explain what variable are, variables are. But in, and so we're just used to that. Hey, here's the thing. And then later, 
we say, oh, well, no, I want x to equal x plus 10. That's what I want to do. And we're just so used to doing that that it's uh, just second nature to us. We think of it in equals, and you'll, you'll watch me as I code functionally because I, I professionally code in, in an imperative programming language. I will do this all the time. This is what I consider my part of my C-sharp accent. I made air quotes. I don't know why I made air quotes. You can't see me making the air quotes. I had to tell you about them. But all right, let's switch back over to F-sharp, because when I say something like let x equal 10, what I'm not, because I can't say x equals x plus 10, I can't do that. It says expression should have type unit. Well, let, well okay, let, can I say let? No. I already made it. Duplicate definition. I already defined it. Can't redefine it. But I do have an operator. So I say, all right, that's Oh, it's red. The value is not mutable. And, well, how do I make a value mutable? I say mutable. And now it will be fine. And x will become x plus 10. But I put mutable there, and uh, one of the cardinal sins of um, coding in F-sharp is making something mutable. Generally speaking, if you've made something mutable, you've done something wrong. That's not really the case. There are there are things. There's always at least one thing, especially in a game, that needs to be mutable, and that's the game state because each frame, it has to be tucked somewhere, and a mutable, a mutable uh, variable is the place to do it. But in but the way that you do that is you should load it, do stuff with it then save it rather than changing it in place. And that's the whole side effect thing that um, functional languages in F-sharp really try to combat against. <laughs> Imperative programs, that's how we do it. And object-oriented, that's what we do all the time. But so, but there are those, there are those cases. And there are those things that exist that we need to use, because, for example, I open system, and I need to do console dot background color needs to be is it console color yeah console color dot cyan I need it to do I, so I need to I need to tuck it in there and that is the assignment operator in F sharp so one more time the main point is stop thinking of the equal sign as assignment that's the imperative way a less than sign followed by a minus sign looking like an arrow that goes left makes more sense. Okay, and one of the last things we're going to do, well, the last thing we're basically going to take care of is let's straighten out and, and get our little hooks <coughs> into into here and we will likely refactor stuff later but so one of the things I want a uh, type texture why is it, why is it squiggling type texture equals call it texture ID that equals uh, we're going to have an avatar the avatar we're going to have a dollar. We'll have other things as well. But uh, what I want to do is I want to, rather than have this, I want to have a map of texture ID to texture 2D. So we're going to say let mutable textures map texture ID texture 2D equals map dot empty. Right, right. Then we're going to have a thing where we load let load textures and we do need a 
whatever this thing is, it's a content manager. And now we do, now we do the clever stuff. We've got avatar, avatar, dollar, dollar. So here we got a sequence. Sequence dot map. Fun ID file file name and what that's going to do is it's going to call a content manager and create ID and content manager load texture 2d file name so that loads that in then the very last thing that's going to happen is map of seek so then so load textures is going to take a content manager and it is going to produce a map of texture ID to texture 2D. So, good. And let's load it here. Textures is assigned to the output of load textures. And this dot content. And I be a little more F sharpie about it. Does this work? Yeah, okay. So, take the content, throw in a load of textures, and then tuck that over into textures. And we can now hopefully get rid of textures. Tar. And there we hope. Now if you work, then we're in good shape. If you don't, all right, and it works. So, <clears throat> but the thing is, I don't necessarily want I want to be able to reuse my game. I, I, I do. And so, what I want is to go so here's texture key. And I'm going to need um we're going to need some parameters. We're going to need texture loader, which is a function that takes a content manager returns map key texture to D. That's capital T. Not why in the world. Doop. The is missing. Texture key comparison. Maybe we don't want to do this yet. Things for implementation are not compatible because the declaration of type texture key requires a constraint in the form of texture key comparison. Okay, where? I'm going to put that where? 
with texture key comparison. Right. I'm going to look this up very quick because it's going to be quite dull to watch me do that. So, looking it up. Ah, okay. So, I found how to do it. So, texture key, when texture key has comparison, so we can have that thing shut up. But the thing is. Have the, the texture loader instead of load texture. Texture loader, which takes a content manager and returns and see textures. So texture key, texture two D, so everything's all copacetic. Because what I really want is for this so um Of course, that means that uh, this thing doesn't know. So it's Let's have that. Um, we'll have that commented out, and we'll, we'll we'll we will get back to it in just a quick moment. So this is this line is getting really long, which I don't like. Can I? I don't. I don't know, and I'm not going to at the moment. It's and it's gonna get. It's not gonna get any better. I tell you that. So the texture loader there. Now I got a program, and it says I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm gonna go texture. ID and this is going to be my game dot load textures. So that's my game dot so far and then in order to have this be in a function so let let draw game it needs to be a sprite batch put that first. so there's a delta I know and then the sprite batch We do need textures. So we're going to go sprite batch, sprite batch. Textures will be of type uh, map texture ID texture two D. every time so and then I need my uh, game renderer which is a what is Delta 
Delta is game time to a map to a sprite patch. a unit. So there's our game render. Presumably just do that anywhere? I don't think I do. So I got that. There's a game render. Game in here. Delta textures sprite batch. So, all right. So I know that. To be up, I don't want gamer. Ah, okay, so it's texture key. <clears throat> Is that gonna work? Is this going to work? No, of course not. What are my error list? Up, oh, yes, this was expected to have my game. Dragging. Extra nice spaces. Right. Is this going to happen? It might. Oh, and we're there. And <clears throat> yes, we've been watching ourselves ever so slowly. Um, well, I guess we don't need this anymore. All this console stuff. No longer even necessary. So sad. So really, in an episode, we have... We definitely don't need that. Don't need a read key. We can keep that, actually. Um, the process input we no longer need. Some of these things, like game state and whatnot, we will we will get to use these things. So just clean up, and I, I believe this function will live again, but not just yet. So yeah, unfortunately, we've we've taken a giant step back, but also a giant step forward because now we actually have a real live, real graphics, real PNGs, and we've got some stuff going on in the application that allow us to um, use hooks so we're going to be we're gonna be getting a lot more functional here so we have a hey here's our game renderer pass that in there I also need an updater pass that in there here's the thing that uh, loads the textures and that's a big win there so from from here on out I just add something to the texture ID and then Add another rec add another little tuple to show this is where uh, that is, and um, I'm I'm quite satisfied with where this is at right now, and that will conclude today's session, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You have been watching a highly monadic episode of the Joy of Functional Game Dev with Ernest Bezerra. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please like and subscribe. And you can always visit the Patreon page listed in the description below. This has been your announcer, Ernest Bezerra. See you next time.